uh, basically what we're going to do is just give a general summary of, of, of maintenance, uh, how to get quick results for your tenants, emergency maintenance, I'll just brush over that because we pretty much covered that um, earlier today, and uh, providing access. Okay, now most bodies call it a categorised either as a building format plan or a standard format plan. There's another body metric plan sitting over there, but we won't talk about that today. Um, now, how, how do we know which, which is which? Okay, to, to identify if the, the, the scheme is registered as a building format plan or a standard format plan, that's going to be disclosed on the registered plans. You'll see down the bottom right hand corner, there's a little thing that says format, and it'll have either standard or building. And as I think Matt was saying earlier, those types of, um, you can access that by our, our resource centre on the, uh, the website as well. Now, basically with the, the difference between building format plans and standard format plans, is that the building format plan, the boundaries of the lot are defined uh, by the building elements. Like in here, the floor, wall, ceiling, that's at the, the, the structural components, uh, which is common for most uh, high rise blocks or whatever, you'd be pretty sure they're going to be a building format plan. But don't that be fooled sometimes? We have I've got townhouse complexes that you would swear should be a standard format plan, but they're registered as a building format plan. So it's one of the first things, first questions that go through our mind when uh, any owner phones up. We have to identify what regulation module we're operating under and whether we're a building format plan or standard format plan. So as we see, we take the, um, the impact and obligations of the owners are completely different within those the, those two plans. Now, I might just step down to the building, oh, sorry, let's get back to the BFP, that one. Yeah, as I was saying, those boundaries there in the, the red lines, that's the boundary of the lot. And pretty much everything inside those red lines, with a, a, a few exceptions, um, would be the responsibility of the owner to, to attend to. So when it comes to, so just bear with me for half -ching. Yeah, uh, because, because I'm, I'm getting pushed for time, what I might say, sorry about that, is uh, we've got, there are detailed notes included in here on all these other bits and pieces I'm, I'm going to talk about. But if we stay on this page for the moment and just look at the building format plan, we'll go through some of the examples of the commonly asked things and you know, who's responsible for what. Right. As you can see in the plan there, pretty much everything outside those red areas would be deemed to be, to be common property. So the gardens and grounds out there, our pathways, whatever. Um, and as in a building format plan, as I said earlier, the body corporate is responsible for the structural elements. So the walls, the roof, the foundations, all that sort of stuff windows in those um, the, the boundary lock walls, windows and associated fittings, body corporate. All right. Now, um, yeah. Garage doors, I'll just use this as an example. Right? So we've got those units there, we've got garage doors on, and let's just presume, because we really have to, that they're all the same doors that was installed at the time of construction. All got the same motors, right? So the door and the associated fittings from a maintenance perspective are, are body corporate. If the owner decides, no, I don't like that motor, I'm going to upgrade mine to a new you know, commercial grade one, he's made an improvement to the common property. Okay? And as soon as you make an improvement to the common property, that owner is thereby responsible for all the repairs and maintenance and replacement of that improvement. So as soon as you upgrade that motor, it's no longer at the body corporate responsibility. If you put up on a brand new roller door, right? Sorry, mate, he's gone through the approval process, the committee said tick, yep, you can have your new, your new roller door, but one of the conditions of approval would be that all ongoing repairs, maintenance and replacement will be at that owner's cost. Um, air cons, there's another interesting one. The, uh, air, air conditioners that service one lot are purely the owner's responsibility. If it was a, 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 a cooling tower, so you had all the ever so those forward and, and the right hand side had one big cooling unit, then because it services more than one lot, it, that would have become a body corporate responsibility. Um, fencing, no I'm interested in one. Do you get uh, questions on fencing? No? Okay. Um, the boundary fence of scheme land is always going to be body corporate. 
right? It depends what's on the other side as to whether we go hard and hard. The fence between two lots right, is going to be shared by the two owners. The fence that borders the lot and common property will be 50-50 body corporate and 50% the owner. So they're probably the three scenarios with um, the fencing. And that's the, uh, pretty much the three golden rules. Boundary fence, scheme land, body corporate, dividing by the, the dividing fence between two lots, shared between the, the two owners, one of them that separates a lot from common property, half, 50-50 body corporate, and, and owner. Um, now, it, I, I won't steal some of Susie's thunder, um, she talks about insurance, but I must stress there's a huge difference between maintenance and insurance. Right? Insurance will cover, uh, if they say the guy changes his, his garage door, put on the new motor, truck back into it, right? that moves out of maintenance and it's going to be an insurable event. So that's covered under insurance, but definitely not under maintenance, because he's made that improvement to, to um, Property. 